Hi folks, HR Funk here. With something a little different, and what I have today is a Smith & Wesson FPC, which stands for Folding Pistol Carbine. Now you might recall the release of this firearm a few months ago because it was one of those days where everybody on YouTube, almost everybody on YouTube, <laughs> released a video featuring the FPC at virtually the exact same moment. I, in fact, haven't seen one until just a few days ago when I was at Hot Munitions, and they had this one, and they were gracious enough to allow me to bring it home for a review. And I've got to tell you, for whatever first impressions are worth, when I first saw the FPC, I was highly unimpressed, and I'm still pretty unimpressed with its appearance. It looks kind of like someone took a Smith & Wesson M&P pistol and crossed it with a kel Sub-2000 and then allowed it to grow up in a toxic waste dump because it just doesn't look very good to me, or at least to my eyes. But maybe I'm judging it too harshly, so we'll get into the review and we'll see just exactly what I can tell you about the Smith & Wesson FPC. So the FPC is Smith & Wesson's most recent entry into the pistol caliber carbine arena. As such, it is chambered for the 9mm Parabellum cartridge, and it is inspired by designs such as the kel Sub-2000 that I mentioned a few moments ago, but it differs in execution and accoutrements. And I'll start out with the first accoutrement that you can see here. The FPC comes in a nice nylon carrying case. When we open the case, we find the FPC itself, and I'm going to raise the camera a little bit so you can see some of these other things. Also, there are storage pockets in the top of the case that have two extra magazines. These are 23 round magazines, and the magazine that is in the FPC currently is a 17 round magazine. So I really appreciate that. A lot of you know how annoyed I am when I get a firearm that only has one magazine. This one comes with three, so kudos to Smith & Wesson for that. Along with the magazines, we have the obligatory lock, we have an owner's manual. In this pouch are three interchangeable back straps and an additional one that is already installed on the FPC, so a total of four back straps that can be switched out in order to customize the FPC to fit your hand. And in the very top, there is a sling along with an empty chamber indicator. So quite a few things come along with the FPC, but the FPC itself is what I'm gonna focus on from this point forward. So the biggest claim to fame for the FPC is the fact that it folds in half for easy stowage in something like a backpack. When it is folded, it has an overall length of about 16 inches. And then, when you're ready to actually use it, it can be unfolded, locked in the open position, and it's ready to fire. All this is accomplished by means of this hinge and latch system. And this seems to be functional enough, but I really don't care for it. It just seems kind of large and clunky. And it seems like this could have been a little bit more well thought out in the design stage. Now, as I said, it does work. And when you fold the carbine in half like this, the charging handle has a notch. I'll see if I can get that where you can see it and I'll try to focus the camera a little bit better. There is a notch that locks into one of the grooves on the side of the rail and actually holds it in place. The downside to this is when you go to open it, there is pressure against that notch, and if you don't pull back slightly on the charging handle, it can be very difficult. Now you can power past it, you can actually pull it, but that's something I don't care for. Now this is a brand new carbine, so maybe with a little bit of wear that will get easier, but it's just something that I noticed. And same thing, when I put it back together, it takes a little bit more force than you would expect to actually lock it in place. So again, I'm not a huge fan of the execution of this part of the design. Again, I think it could probably have been done better with a little bit more thought. Now the big advantage to the side folding design comes in when you attach an optic because with the side folder 
in a standard optic mount, there is no need to do anything different once you have mounted it. And you are going to need to mount an optic or get some sort of a sighting system because the FPC comes with no sights whatsoever when you purchase it. So I think Smith & Wesson did a great job by including three magazines. I think it sucks that they didn't include any sort of sighting device. So the first thing you have to do when you purchase one of these before you can shoot it is purchase an optic or some other sort of sights to be able to go out and actually shoot. I think that is terrible and that's something I think Smith & Wesson should rectify. The end on the FPC as you see is polymer similar to the Smith & Wesson M&P 1522. The rail that you see at the top here actually has a seam down the center again just indicating that it is made from polymer. There are M-lock attachments all the way around so for any sort of accessories, bipods, lights or what have you those will be easy to mount but again I'm somewhat unimpressed by the forend and the rail system and I'm very unimpressed by the fact that there are no sights whatsoever that come with this firearm. The FPC operates on a straight blowback system and we can see the bolt here and there is a recoil spring or a buffer spring contained inside the receiver tube and those two things are all that keeps the action locked until the bullet clears the end of the muzzle and pressure drops to a safe limit. The charging handle actually works pretty well. It is shaped in a manner to somewhat replicate the charging handle of an AR-15 so it seems familiar to anyone that's used one of those. In general terms straight blowback actions tend to be very reliable and I have not experienced any malfunctions in shooting the FPC as of yet and at this point I've put somewhere between 50 and 100 rounds through it and functioning has been flawless with two different types of ammunition so again that straight blowback system tends to be very reliable and that's borne out once again by the FPC and the performance I've gotten thus far. The receiver tube as best I can tell is anodized aluminum and one of the things I've noticed is with not much cycling of the charging handle we can already start to see a wear mark becoming visible so if you're someone who is concerned about your firearm showing wear quickly this is probably going to continue to show more and more wear with not much more handling so just be aware of that. The buttstock on the FPC is polymer and it is non-adjustable so you cannot adjust the length of pull this is one fixed length. It also doubles for storage of your spare magazines which is nice except for the fact that the latch that holds the magazines in place is very counterintuitive and this is another one of those places in the design that I think they should have taken a little bit more time with because the magazines are locked in place if I push on the same side of this latch as the magazine I want to release it will not come out so you have to push on the opposite side that will release your magazine and then you can reload your FPC same thing when I go to release this one which actually was not locked in place if I push on the side that the magazine is on, it doesn't release. I have to push on the opposite side to get it to release my spare magazine. So I think that might have been another design feature that was rushed somewhat and they should have given a little bit more thought to it. I like the fact that it stores the spare magazines. I don't like the way the magazine storage latch works. The heart of the action is essentially the Smith & Wesson M&P pistol design which is very obvious to anyone that has any familiarity with those handguns. The trigger has the inertial safety blade that we see there and it feels kind of like an M&P trigger. It's definitely not the best M&P trigger that I ever felt in my life but it doesn't feel bad. As I said earlier, you can replace the back straps, or as Smith & Wesson calls them, the grip inserts. And the FPC will take standard Smith & Wesson pistol magazines, M&P magazines that is, but they again have this silly collar. The first time I remember seeing these is with the original Shield pistols. Nobody liked them then, and for whatever reason, Smith & Wesson continues to use them. 
And that's another thing that I think should be done away with from not only this firearm, but any of the other ones in the Smith & Wesson line that use them. The FPC has a threaded muzzle for attachment of your preferred muzzle device. But something I've noticed, and this is not exclusive to the Smith & Wesson FPC, but there are a lot of firearms that have a muzzle protector just like this without any sort of an O-ring to provide tension. And when you're shooting, this thread protector will loosen. And you have to check it periodically or sooner or later, if you do enough shooting, you're going to look at the end of your barrel and that's just going to be gone <laughs> because it's going to get loosened to the point that finally a bullet is just going to take it down range along with it. I don't know why more manufacturers don't put a simple O-ring to secure these things in place, but that's another thing that I noticed while shooting the FPC carbine. A departure from the M&P pistol design is the safety that we see in front of the trigger guard here. When it is protruding from the right side of the firearm, it is on safe. And when it is pushed through to the opposite side, it is on fire. And it helps if the action is cocked. There we go. This is reminiscent of a Remington 870. In terms of its location and function, I've gotten used to, when I use that shotgun, indexing my trigger finger on the safety, and if I need to fire quickly, I go off safe and right onto the trigger. When you reapply the safety, you actually have to reach underneath and push through from the other side. The magazine catch is another feature from the M&P pistol design, and just like with the pistols, it can be reversed to the opposite side for a left-handed shooter, if you prefer. Another thing that comes from the M&P pistol, you'll see right here, this is the bolt stop slash bolt release, and this is probably one of the worst parts of this design as far as its function. To lock the bolt open, it's not too bad from either side. If I'm pushing up from this side, I can maybe lock the bolt open. There we go. But when it comes to releasing the bolt, there's almost no room for your thumb to get in there. And even with no magazine in place, <laughs> if I take my thumbnail and push down on that, I can push hard enough to get it to release. And on this side, <laughs> even with two thumbs, I can't get it to release. So that is a horrible, horrible feature of this design. And again, that is something they really should have spent a lot more time in the development and design stage and not put out a firearm that had that attached to it. Now the good news is, just like with an AR-15, you can release the bolt with the charging handle and just ignore the bolt stop slash bolt release altogether. Now I suppose the one redeeming quality of the bolt stop is the fact that it allows the bolt to lock open on an empty magazine. This happens automatically when firing, so it doesn't require any input from the shooter in order to activate or deactivate that, which is good because as I said, this thing is horrible. Folks, I've tried several times to get the trigger pull weight on the FPC carbine, and I cannot get three consistent pulls. The best that I'm getting or the average I should say I'm getting with all these various pulls is a little over five pounds. And I think that's a good estimate of where this trigger is going to break. But again, because of the angles that I have here and the drop safety and everything else, I just cannot get three pulls in a row that are all, in my estimation, good consistent trigger pulls. So here is the inescapable comparison, folks. We're going to compare the M&P FPC to the kel Sub-2000. And the Sub-2000 is about $100, give or take, less than the FPC. And it doesn't come with some of the extras like the carrying bag and the interchangeable back straps and all that sort of thing. But the Sub-2000 is just a bare-bones carbine. 
and this one is set to function with Smith & Wesson magazines. The charging handle on the Sub 2000 is different, but it works pretty much just as well as the charging handle on the FPC. The folding of the Sub 2000 is different, and this is the big advantage with the side folding design because I have to use this M Carbo mount in order to remove the optic when I fold the Sub 2000. Now it does lock in place just like the FPC and there's a latch right here. And this latch I like a little bit better because it's easier to find. The Sub 2000 unfolds easier and I lock the optic in place and the Sub 2000 when I purchase it comes with sights. They're not the greatest sights but they are sights that you get when you purchase your Sub 2000. Obviously it's also a straight blowback system. It does have some adjustment to the length of pull. When I switch over to the FPC carbine, it has, as I mentioned, the storage area for your spare magazines. It has the Smith & Wesson handgun, M&P handgun action. The trigger is superior on the FPC. That's one of the downsides to the Sub 2000. The trigger on the Sub 2000 is just not that great. Now, I've used this Sub 2000 quite a bit, and I've always been able to get decent accuracy with this trigger, but the trigger on the FPC carbine, as I said, is vastly superior. When it comes to mounting accessories, there is really no problem mounting accessories to either one, so I would call that a draw. In all, with the difference in the price, For the purpose of these carbines, I would probably stick with the Sub 2000, and if I wanted to upgrade the trigger somewhat, I could do that with some aftermarket parts. If I was not interested in doing any kind of upgrades, and I just wanted to get something that I thought was going to work well for a long time, I would probably... I don't know. <laughs> I There just are so many features of the... FPC carbine that I don't like, especially that bolt stop. Now, I have to admit, there is no bolt stop whatsoever or last round bolt hold open for the Sub 2000. So that's a feature that doesn't even occur on the Sub 2000 that exists in a less than perfect state on the FPC carbine. Again, I think for my money, I would just end up sticking with the Sub 2000. Okay, folks, I wanted to get a weight on the FPC carbine, and I thought about removing the optic before I weighed it, but since you're going to need an optic, or at least some sort of sights, to be able to use the FPC, I decided to leave the optic in place, and it is completely unloaded, but all the magazines are stowed in their respective positions, and in this condition, it is weighing 6.14 pounds. So just over 6 pounds, not bad when it comes to weight for something you might be carrying around out in the woods or in a backpack or what have you. But again, with no optic, it would be a little bit lighter and that's the way it actually would come out of the box. By the way, for anyone who's curious about how that compares to the weight of the Sub 2000, with a magazine, obviously there's nowhere to store additional magazines and as I have it equipped with this optic and a flashlight, it's coming in at 5.37 pounds, so maybe three quarters of a pound-ish lighter than the FPC carbine. All right, folks, now let's talk about how the FPC carbine performed on the range. Fortunately, I had an optic that I was able to mount to it. I went out to the range yesterday and I zeroed this optic at a distance of 25 yards. After that, I fired a five-shot group from that distance of 25 yards, and here's how that went. And from that distance of 25 yards, 
That group is just a little over one and a quarter inches center to center. It's about one and three eighths inches. So not bad at all from that distance with a non-magnified optic. Obviously I'm hitting a little bit low, so I need to do a little bit more fine tuning on my zero. Hitting about two and a half inches low from that distance of 25 yards. So I'll make that quick sight correction and then we'll go on with the rest of the evaluation. So not bad performance with the FPC carbine from that distance of 25 yards. I should probably mention that when I mounted this optic and went out to the range, I sat down at 25 yards and I fired out my initial zeroing group at a full-size silhouette target. The shots looked like they were more or less in the center of the target, so I went ahead and fired that five-shot group. After firing the five-shot group, I did make an elevation correction. I raised my point of impact 10 minutes of angle from that distance of 25 yards, made no windage correction whatsoever, and figured that would be good enough to shoot my way through the rest of the test. So after that was done, I decided since this is a pistol caliber carbine, I would shoot it through my standard pistol tests. So controlled pairs from a distance of five yards, a failure drill, actually two failure drills from a distance of seven yards. I went back to 15 yards, and from 15 yards, rather than firing shots to the body like I normally do with a handgun, I fired five shots to the head from that distance, and then I went back to 25 yards and fired five body shots from 25 yards standing unsupported from that distance. Here's how those drills went. And I'd say those six shots dead center in the heart from that distance of five yards is pretty darn good for this new M&P FPC. All right, again, three great heart shots. One of them a little bit high up here, clipped the aorta and off into the lung just a little bit but two nearly perfect headshots from that distance of seven yards. So the FPC is extremely controllable and it's obviously demonstrating great accuracy. Now I am getting some offset with this sight, which is to be expected with any firearm that has this type of a sighting arrangement. So as I fire these, particularly the headshots, my dot is up here to make up for that offset. Same thing with the heart shots. I was holding up in here, obviously with that one, I got just a little bit high that time. But the carbine itself is doing extremely well, and as I said, it's very, very controllable on those drills. And I was pulling those shots off to the right just a little bit. That was me, not the carbine itself. I have one shot that tried to make it off the head, but four of those shots are all pretty good. And again, this was just me and shooting at that tempo from 15 yards, I'm not too worried about what I'm seeing on this target. And I think I'll take that for five shots from 25 yards, shooting standing unsupported. Got four out of the five on and just below the heart on the spine here. Those Four shots are in a group probably just over an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter center to center. One shot strayed just a little ways away from the rest of the group. But again, good lung shot there just off the aorta. And again, from 25 yards shooting at that shot tempo, I think that is just fine performance from the FPC carbine. So some observations after firing that portion of the test with the FPC carbine. First off, much like any other 9mm semi-auto carbine I've ever fired, shooting this thing's a lot of fun. Recoil is negligible, accuracy is decent, it's just a fun, fun little carbine to shoot. So there's a lot of things I don't like about it, but I can't criticize the way that it shoots. The accuracy was pretty decent, as you saw there. I had no problem keeping those shots on the body of the target when I was firing at the body. When I was firing at the head, I was rushing my shots a little bit and pulling them slightly off to the right. That was me, not the carbine's fault. But it shoots well. Again, I had a lot of fun with it and shooting my way through those drills was not difficult at all. But since it's a pistol caliber carbine, I also wanted to try it from some extended distances. So today I went back out to the range and I fired it from 50 yards and from 100 yards and here's how those tests went.
Last shot looked like it was off to the right. Let's go take a look at the target. And I did manage to pull that last shot off to the right. That one's my fault, folks. I saw the dot move just as I pressed the trigger and I knew that one went off. The other four, nicely centered at the target. I was holding the dot pretty much right at center mass. That's where the shots are going. So again, not bad at that distance of 50 yards with the FPC carbine. Now let's go back a little bit farther. Folks, I'm gonna go ahead and fire the 100 yard shots from the bench just so I don't make the carbine look bad. I'm not sure just exactly what the drop is gonna be with this nine millimeter ammunition at this distance. I'm going to aim high center chest and we'll see where they go. And they're all down range. Let's go take a look at the target. All right. I had a feeling, based on what I saw on that 50 yard target, that my 100 yard group was probably going to be off to the right somewhat, and it is. Now keep in mind as you look at this, that that sight that I have mounted on the FPC is zeroed for 25 yards. So if I was going to actually keep that firearm and keep that sight on it, I'd make about a three or maybe four minute correction to the left and call it good. The group size from that distance for all five shots is five inches with four out of the five going into about three inches center to center. So not bad at all for the overall group size or the accuracy that I'm getting from there. I am getting some drop with those bullets and the ammunition that I was using for this particular test was 124 grain Spear Lawman which probably has a muzzle velocity out of the FPC of around 1,400, maybe 1,500 feet per second. My hold was right here, as I said before, high center chest. So those shots are dropping about nine inches. So not horrible. I would keep the zero at 25 yards. And again, as I said, just make that left windage correction and call it all good. But overall, shooting from 100 yards, I'm not upset with that at all. So again, decent accuracy from both 50 yards and especially at 100 yards with the FPC carbine. And this is a little bit like the tail of two firearms. In the shop, when I'm looking at this thing and handling it and kind of evaluating all of its quote unquote features, I don't care for it. I really am not a fan of this carbine. But when I go out and shoot it, <laughs> it's a lot of fun to shoot. It's a nice shooting little carbine. I really sort of wish Smith & Wesson would have spent some more time and developed this design a little bit more to get rid of some of the weird aspects that we see here. Truthfully, do away with the side folding design altogether. Make this a takedown carbine, sort of like the Ruger PC-9, where you just separate the muzzle and forend from the receiver and buttstock and then have a quick release and quick reinstall so you can reattach it and go back to shooting. I think that would far be better than this side folding hinge latch affair. But as I said, when I'm shooting this thing, I really kind of like it. I think uh, maybe if it was mine, it's not going to be mine, but if it were, I don't know how often I would even fold it up. I might just leave the thing opened and use it this way and just not even worry about folding it and unfolding it and all that. So in any case, folks, this one's going back to hot munitions. I'm just not a fan of this overall, even though I like the way it shoots, but I have a lot of other carbines that I like the way they shoot. <laughs> I think with some design development or maybe even just a complete redesign, Smith & Wesson might have a decent firearm here, but I'm just not a fan of it in its current state. Even so, I want to say thanks to Hot Munitions for providing the FPC carbine for this evaluation. I would not have been able to bring it to you without them, and also for sponsoring some of the ammunition that you saw when I was shooting through the various drills. And that's going to do it for the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... 
And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off your purchase from Optics Planet. Also remember the new discount code from Hot Munitions. If you go to Hot Munitions, you can use my discount code there, which is HRFUNK10, and that'll save you 10% off your purchase from Hot Munitions. Last but not least is the Target sponsor for the channel, Targets Online. Go to the Targets Online website, check out their inventory, and see if they have anything that's going to meet your target needs. See you next time, folks. And until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.